The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster, assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wonder if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course I didn't want to be stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. But damn, this gate. Like seriously, this is the most intimidating gate in the world. Who would want to do anything with this gate? We should leave. So I walk towards the main building of Yumaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have, more like a park. With a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things, words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kinda eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible, instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. We're not Simeon, this is still the same dimension. Don't worry, Asao. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again, how they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a common color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Dot dot dot. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was my last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no real life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was probably no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. You must be n n Nikki. Nakai. So, you are... Excellent. I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really anxious. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure, I mean, isn't that normal? Of course, but not everybody likes to be at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Let's go, then. My heart is pounding in my chest, and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door... Bleh. The third door down the third floor corridor is marked as the classroom for class 3-3. Too many threes. Too many... Wait. Third door down. Third corridor. Third classroom. 
Half-Life 3 confirmed. Muto opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, uh, get a grip. This is a big step. I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. Look at all these people. All these people that I don't know. I know her. And her. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high and there's lots of space left over around and in between the desks. Excuse me. An entire wall is left. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students in any other school, but then why would they be here? They probably like me and have something wrong with them, but they're probably like me and have something wrong with them. They don't like me. No one likes me. <laughs> look at that guy. He's a real charmer. He is. He's, he got that girl looking at him. She's into him. I swear. I swear she's into him. No way she's not into him. Mm -hmm. They're probably like me and have something wrong with them. Only it's just not immediately obvious. Then I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. It's just a thumb. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. peek a -boo. I no longer see you. There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. Okay, back to that reading. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery-looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands and so does everyone else, except the one girl in the first row who has only one hand. I cringe a little, but hide it by bowing and thanks for the applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, I'm Hisao Nakai, and after that, my hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. I love boobs! What? No, no one. Give me some applause. Yeah! That guy gets it. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Everyone seems to be satisfied, even with what little I said, though. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. It could have gone worse. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along while letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row... Bleh. The first row girl claps on this round, with her one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandaged stump. It makes me feel a little bad. 
We're going to be doing some group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Yeah, it's fine with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She's the class representative. She can explain anything you might want to know. Excuse me? That was weird. Okay, where was I? She can explain anything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces that we will be working in groups of three. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Slow, the teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Alright. Hakamichi is right there. Shizuni Hakamichi. As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. I take a seat next to her, by the window. Hey, I guess you're Hakamichi, right? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> what? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. Hmm, let's see, how do I do her voice? It's nice- Bleh. Hmm. It's nice to meet you too, but... I'm not Hakamichi. I'm Misha. This is Hakamichi Shichan. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her. The one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me the whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short yet carefully, neatly brushed hair, a pair of oval-shaped glasses balance on the tip of a dainty nose, and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. It's nice to meet you. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Hakamichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, You'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would think I was a... Shichan. Shichan. This is our... Shichan is deaf. I'm the one who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says it's nice to meet you, too. I think I give up on that voice. I'll think of another one in a bit. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course he is. If he wasn't, he would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right? He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today so soon. Hee-chan, right? He-chan? Yep, it fits, doesn't it? Did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits. You look just like I imagined. <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hee-chan. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Takamichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other excitedly, their hands blur. Misha seems a little overexcited. Overwhelmed. Huh. There, sorry about that. Shichan wants you to know that she's the class rep, so if there is anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around if a little... But we can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Thanks, that would be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just kind of came straight to class today. <laughs> That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school. Not just with school either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Shichan? <laughs> so weird. Learn about where you're going? 
I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go along with it, half-assedly, but anyway. I don't say anything, and Misha saw something that ends in a shrug. What was that? Seems like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. Both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. It was just a shrug. Get over it, Hazal. You look down. You okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. Ha ha ha. 